David, one thing that I'm very, very proud of is that I did not inherit any money from my father. I built everything from scratch to where I am. So your father died. In this video, you are going to see an interview with the richest man in Africa, but let's start with his brief history. Aliko Dangote is a Nigerian business magnate and philanthropist who is widely regarded as one of the wealthiest individuals in Africa. Born on April 10, 1957, in Kano, Nigeria, Dangot comes from a wealthy Muslim family of traders. His great-grandfather, Alhaji El Hassan Dantata, was one of the wealthiest businessmen in West Africa during his time. Dangot attended Sheikh Ali Kumasi Madrasa and Capital High School in Kano before studying business at Al Azhar University in Cairo, Egypt. After completing his education, he returned to Nigeria and started working for his uncle's business, which was involved in importing and distributing goods such as sugar, rice, and cement. In 1977, at the age of 21, Dangot ventured into business on his own and founded a trading firm called Dangot Group. Initially, he focused on commodities such as cement, sugar, and flour, capitalizing on Nigeria's growing population and demand for these products. He gradually expanded his business empire, diversifying into various industries, including manufacturing, real estate, oil, and gas. One of Dangote's major successes came with the establishment of the Dangote Cement Company in 1992. Leveraging Nigeria's vast natural resources, he built cement factories across the country, making Dangote Cement the largest cement producer in Africa. The company has since expanded its operations to other African countries. Over the years, Dangot has acquired numerous companies and investments, including stakes in telecommunications, banking, and other sectors. He has also ventured into the oil and gas industry, with interests in exploration, production, and refining. As his business empire grew, Dangot's wealth skyrocketed. He became the first Nigerian billionaire in 2008, according to Forbes magazine, and has consistently ranked among the richest people in the world. His wealth is primarily derived from his holdings in the Dangote Group, which is a conglomerate with interests in several sectors. Aside from his business pursuits, Dangote is known for his philanthropy. Through the Dangote Foundation, he has made significant contributions to education, healthcare, and poverty alleviation initiatives in Nigeria and other African countries. Aliko Dangote's success story exemplifies the entrepreneurial spirit and business acumen that have propelled him to become one of Africa's most influential and respected business leaders. Talk about how you made this amount of money, uh, which is uh, by far the largest amount of money that any individual has in Africa. So. Um, you came from a wealthy family or not a wealthy family? Uh, I came from a wealthy family. Uh, my late uh, uh, great-grandfather uh, in the 1940s was actually the uh, richest, uh, you know, uh, West African. My late grandfather was one of the wealthiest Nigerian. You know, uh, the family name is Dentata. That's from my maternal side. Uh, my father too, you know, was fairly rich, you know, but he was both, uh, you know, in business and also in right. politics. But you know, uh, David, one thing that I'm very, very proud of is that I did not inherit any money from my father. I built everything from scratch to where I am. So your father died when you were relatively young? Yeah, he died when I was eight years old. So uh, he didn't leave in his will a large amount of money for you? Well, he left in the will, but, uh, you know, I mean, uh, whatever that I inherited from him, which means in assets, I gave that one to charity since then. Okay. So did you go to college in uh, Nigeria? No, I, I went in uh, Egypt. Egypt, all right. And what did you study? Uh, business. All right. So you graduated at what age? I graduated at about 20 years old. All right. So you went back from Egypt to Nigeria? Yes, I went back. And then and I... What did you get a job? What did you do? I started work with uh, my, you know, uncle, but there's few months and then I went to Lagos and now I started my own business by just, you know, buying cement 
selling. You know, it was just a very low key business. All right. So you're 20, 21 years old. You're buying cement. You're a trader. You're not, I was trading. Yes. You're not was, making cement. You're trading it. <clears throat> I was trading at that time. Now, cement is your main business. We'll talk about it in a moment. But why is cement such a big part of uh, Africa's, uh, you know, wealth? At well, least you in know, Nigeria? the the issue is that when you look at cement, cement is what builds infrastructure. And we need a lot of infrastructural deficit. In Nigeria alone, we have about 17,000 deficit of housing. And it is all over in uh, you know, Africa. So when we started cement in Nigeria, we realized that majority of it was actually imported. And that is why we went in there, we started. And it's a long story. So you ultimately were trading cement. And then was it hard to get the money to keep that business going? No, it wasn't really hard. Uh, at that time, I was buying domestically. We started importation in 1980 because I started business in 78. So by 1980, we started importing sugar, rice, you know, commodities generally. And then we stopped the cement uh, business because the cement I was actually doing local trading. It wasn't really import business. We started import of cement in 2000. Okay, so you had a cement uh, trading business um, somebody thought Lafarge may be buying it. You decided not to sell because they want to control. And yet you then decided to build your own cement manufacturing business. Is that right? Yes, I decided in 2003 uh, to build my own cement. That time, Nigeria was only producing about 1.8, 1.9 million tons. But we went ahead and started with 5 million tons of uh, cement okay. capacity. So what year was that? This was 2000, and we started the building end of 2003, and we finished in 2007. And so now you're the largest cement manufacturer in uh, Nigeria? We are the largest uh, cement manufacturer in sub-Saharan Africa. Let's suppose somebody's watching this and say, I want to be like Mr. Dangote. I want to be a successful businessman in Africa. Uh, what are the attributes, or anywhere, uh, where, what are the attributes that you think you have brought to the table which make you successful? Is it intelligence, hard work, persistence, all of those things? What would you say are the most important attributes? I think the most important one, number one, David, if you are going into any business, you must understand the business A to Z. You must know that business. You shouldn't just go and invest because somebody now will say, okay, hey, you know, there's good money in cement, then you go and jump into cement. You have to understand the business in and out and that's the difference with me i know my business in and out you can wake me up any time and ask me about uh, fertilizer ask me about anything that we are doing and the other one is really to work very hard and you have to have the tenacity of continuing to you know, you have some hiccups here and there but you have to have uh, you have to be focused in terms of what you are doing now, I've known you for a while, and I never seem to get you to yell or scream, or you seem very low-key. Um, you don't use the technique of yelling and screaming at people, or you're just very low-key and even keeled. To what do you attribute that, or am I wrong? I think, no, you're not wrong. That's my nature. I'm always, I'm very quiet, and I'm very, very calm. Uh, I get upset sometimes when people try to be, you know, either to outsmart me, or uh, I, I don't like people who will not tell me the truth. I always like people to look at me through, you know, and tell me the truth. So were you investing any in the United States? We are going to start uh, investing, uh, you know, in the United States just after this uh, project. We want to open a family office, uh, both in New York and in London. We already have an office in London, which has been operating for the last uh, 30 years. So we want to turn part of that, you know, as a family uh, office so that we can diversify the wealth. Uh, as you know, you know, I've discussed this with, with you before, where, you know, sometimes in Africa you have issues of devaluation, you know, uh, you know, so we want to really preserve some of the family's wealth. Right. Now, sometimes wealthy people, they collect art, they collect cars, they collect other things or what some of your wealth that you're not using for philanthropy, what do you do with it? Do you collect, are you a collector of things or? I'm not uh, really a collector of arts, you know. Um, the, anytime when I have excess money, I like to put more in terms of charity. I don't really have very expensive uh, lifestyle. And the great pleasure of your life is just building your company and then giving away extra money? That's my greatest pleasure in life.